So last class we talked about forward kinematics of a differential drive car and now we'll do inverse kinematics. So if you recollect, inverse kinematics is a problem of figuring out what, what are the joint angles given end effector position for a manipulator. In case of a car, it would be if you want a point P, and I've shown that here, to trace a particular curve, then what should be the speeds of the left and right wheel? So here is the left wheel, so phi dot L, and here is the right wheel. So let me write that down. Given x, p as a function of time, find phi dot r and phi dot l. Okay. We've seen that we don't really talk about phi dot r, phi dot l. We actually talk in terms of v, which is the sum of phi dot r and phi dot l and omega. So this is the same as same as finding v and omega, which is basically how fast you want to go in the forward direction and how much you want to turn. So this is the definition of the inverse kinematics problem. So if you remember for the manipulator, we wanted the end effector, which is the, if you remember it was point Q, uh, we wanted that to trace a circle. In that case, we found out what were the angles theta one and theta two such that the end effector would trace a circle. In case of a differential drive robot, we want say this point P to trace a circle or whatever curve you want. Then we want to find what phi dot r phi dot l is, which is same as finding V and omega. So what I've done here is I have drawn two figures for the differential drive car. One of them, the left one is the position of the car at time t equals zero. The right one is the position of the car at time t not equal to zero, set a generic time t. So position at time t equals zero, position at time t. Okay, so pretty much the same things. Oh, there's a frame x0, y0, which is the fixed frame at time t equals zero. At a new time t, x1, y1 is the new frame. And the direction which x1 makes with the original x0 is theta. So what we'll do here is we will effectively find how point P is related to the motion of the car as we spin the left and right wheel. So our goal is to find find position of P in frame zero. Okay. And later on, I'll actually show you animation or simulation animation where you can actually get the differential drive more car to trace a circle or we'll actually do what is known as an asteroid curve. So let's get started. So using the formula for rotation, we have position of point P in frame zero is nothing but R one zero P one. So that's the rotation formula. We can also write the position of C in frame zero as R one zero C one. Okay. And so if you want to, well, we want to somehow relate position P with C because we have in the past derived equations for how point C will vary as a function of time. So what I'll do is, I'll take the difference. So I have R one zero P 
P1 minus C. So now I'll expand this out in terms of, of X and Y. So I'll write it again, P0 minus C0 is R10 P1 minus C1. So the position of point P in frame zero is XP0 and XC0 for position C, similarly the Y position. So now this is a two by one matrix equals the rotation matrix, which we know is cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. And finally, we need to write uh, P1 minus C1. So that's going to be X, P1 minus X, C1, Y, P1 minus Y, C1. Okay, so there's nothing uh, new here. It's everything. Uh, expand it out in terms of X and Y. Now we can make one observation from the figure. Let me uh, pull up the figure again. So we want to find what is the position of point P with respect to C or the difference between these coordinates. So let me just copy this figure. It might be easier to put it right near the equation. Anybody remembers where the copy is? I, last time I had a hard time finding it. I think this might be copy. Yeah, this is copy, okay. Let me paste that here. Okay, there it is. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is find the distance of this point from this point C, right, this distance. So that is basically, and I've written down the earlier figure, the distance is fixed because the point P is always going to be at the same distance from point C, because remember that point P uh, is, it could be, uh, if you wanted to actually trace a curve, then you'd probably put a pen at point P. So that distance is, let's call that PY for the Y coordinate and PX for the X coordinate. So this distance, is simply going to be px, py, and that is fixed, it's known. Okay, so now I can write xp0, xc0, sorry, xp0, yp0, equals x c0 y c0 so what i'm doing here is essentially uh, splitting the, the two the two quantities as separate terms plus cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta and px py So I'll also write this down as X C zero Y C zero. And this is only because uh, later on when we write the code, this equation will be useful. I'm trying to now write X C zero Y C zero in, term, in terms of X P zero Y P zero by just moving this term, the second term to the left side. Right. 
and the reason I did that is because we'll use this in the code. This is needed for sin. Okay, both these expressions are needed in the same. We'll write a function which basically given c point c and given px py will give you x p y p and vice versa given x p y p and px py it will give you x c y c and that will be needed in the code so i just wrote it down there so you can easily refer it let me number these equations call it one and two okay so now we are all set to actually go about doing the inverse kinematics i'm going to take the first expression one and differentiate with respect to time with respect to time. So I get xp dot zero, i dot p zero equals x dot c zero, y dot c zero plus, okay, now there are two terms. There is a rotation matrix and then there is pxpy. The good news is p x p y are constants. See, that doesn't p x p y does not change with time because position of point p with respect to c, this p x p y is not going to change because the charge is not expanding or contracting. It's going to remain fixed, so that's not changing. The only thing I need to differentiate is the terms in the matrix, and the the good thing about differentiation for a matrix term is that you need to take the derivative of each term, and that will take care of the derivative. So here, first I take the derivative of cosine theta, that is minus sine theta, and the derivative of theta is theta dot. Similarly, we have derivative of sine theta is minus, minus sine theta is minus cosine theta times theta dot. Continuing to the second row, we have cosine theta, theta dot, and then minus sine theta, theta dot. Okay, I'll copy that in the next page. Now we can note some things we did in the in the previous class, which is we essentially derived a formula for x c x dot c and y dot c. So I'm going to sub that in here. X dot p y dot p zero remains as it is. X dot C is if you if you look past through the forward kinematics note it's simply V cosine theta. Y dot C is V sine theta plus theta dot was simply omega. So this is going to be minus sine theta omega minus cosine theta omega cosine theta omega and minus sine theta times omega px, py. Okay, so if you want, you can expand this out as v cosine theta minus sine theta omega times px minus cosine theta omega py v sine theta plus cosine theta omega px minus sine theta omega times py, okay? And what I'll do is just to make this a little bit more compact, this can be used the way it is, but to make it a little bit compact, what I'll do is I'll write this as cosine theta times minus px sine theta. So that's sine theta px and then minus cosine theta py. So that's the second term. And then sine theta times, oh, sorry, the final element is cosine theta times px 
so px times cosine theta and then sine theta py and the reason i did that is because now i can pull out v and omega so when you multiply this matrix with v omega the way i've shown you actually end up getting what was earlier Okay, so this is what I was after, which is I was trying to express the rate of change of point P, which is the point we are trying to trace as a function of V and omega. And V and omega are the controls. In this case, V and omega correspond to the speed of the left and right wheel. In, in There's some formula between V omega and phi dot R, phi dot L, which I derived in the forward kinematics class. Okay, so how do we actually end up doing inverse kinematics? We want X, P, Y, P to trace a particular curve, uh, circle, whatever you want. Uh, the way this is done for differential drive is that we actually use what is known as a proportional controller. Okay, what that means is we are trying to ensure that x dot p zero is a gain term, which you choose, times x ref minus x p, and y dot p zero is k p y y ref minus y p so this is something which uh, which is heuristically chosen it's not um, if you do this the hunch is if you if you do it properly if you choose the gains properly k p k k p x and k p y then x ref is going to be equal to x p so you're trying to ensure that x dot p is zero and the way you do it is by seeking a proportional controller. So KPX, KPY are user chosen gains. Okay. And X ref, Y ref are desired reference motions. So what happens here is as long as, okay, let me just put this in this equation and then maybe tell you what exactly is going on. So I'm putting the values for x dot p, y dot p in the first equation to get k p x x ref minus x p k p y ref minus y p cosine theta minus px sine theta minus cosine theta py okay so what you do is we try to set v omega which is on the right side, which are your control variables, such that x ref, y ref, sorry, x p, y p. By the way, this should be x p zero, y p zero. I forgot to put that. Such that x p zero, y p zero follows x ref y ref okay so that's the goal so we can solve for v omega because this is basically some matrix which we can invert so by inverting the new page what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this matrix invert it and essentially solve for V and Omega, the question. Yeah, the question was, are these gains? Yeah, they are gains. By gains, these are just constants which you choose. Okay, so let's invert the matrix to solve for V and Omega, and that will be nice because, because 
we can actually plug that into the equation which we derived for forward kinematics and effectively command the differential drive to follow the curve you want. So inversion gives me something like this, py, px. And by the way, I did not do this inversion by hand. There is a way to do this in MATLAB using a, the symbolic toolbox. And I'll be talking about the symbolic toolbox in the next uh, section on deriving equations. So bear with me about this complicated formula, but as I said, you will not have to derive this by hand. also from forward kinematics which is last class we wrote down x dot c is v cosine theta y dot c zero is v sine theta and theta dot is omega so the way this works is so this is how you will simulate this simulation one x ref y ref is given okay which is these things so let's call this equation three call this equation four so we will use use three to solve for v omega. So once you do that, then use four to get x dot c, y dot c, and theta, right? Because inputs to x dot c, y dot c is actually v and omega, and of course theta. And then finally, integrate four to get x c y c and keep doing that essentially so given x ref y ref solve for v omega from equation three then find the rate of change of c and then finally you get by integration you get x c y c and there was probably one more thing which is if you notice this equation here uh, this equation, equation number three, relies on x p y p. So you'll also need to supply x p y p at each step. So what you can do then in that case is use. Let's see, I think I believe I called it equation number two somewhere. So going back, if you see, I wrote down two equations. This the first equation, given c, I can find the coordinates of point p. So I need to use equation one to solve for coordinates of p. So what I do is use one to get x p zero y p zero which then again goes to there right because equation three uses x p zero y p zero so this will be clear when i talk when i show you the simulation but this is how we'll do the simulation once you do the simulation you will get x c y c as a function of time and then what remains to be done is to just animate the, the, the motion of the differential drive car like you have done in the past using patch command. Okay, so I'll show you code next. Meanwhile, if you have questions, feel free to uh, ask them now to go through the code. So what I'll do is I'll provide this code, which, is, which is, has about five files. Okay, so the main file is differential drive IK. 
let me run this first. Uh, what I've done is instead of tracing a circle, which you've seen in the past, I've uh, traced a curve, which is known as asteroid. And the equation of the asteroid is given here, a cos two pi t uh, raised to three and same for y, there's a sign there. So let's see what this curve produces. Okay, so two figures. Hold on, I'm not able to uh, get my first figure, figure one. Okay, so that's the asteroid. And then figure two gives me velocity and angular velocity, so V and omega. And then this is basically the error. The error is the difference between X reference and XP. So that will be the X error. And then the blue is uh, Y reference minus YP zero. And you can see the reference, the error is about 0 0.005. So if you think this as uh, meters, then essentially the error is less than a millimeter. Or a millimeter. Okay, so let's look at the, co the code now. Okay, so I'll define all my constants here. R is basically the chassis of the car, that's 0 0.1, the, 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 the radius is 0 0.1. The position of the point P is going to be 0 0.05. So it's basically along the X axis. If you remember the figure, it's not on the Y axis. The Y axis is zero. And then the gain, I chose it to be 100. This is again a constant. Remember there was a KPX, KPY. I chose both of them to be equal, but you don't have to put them equal. It just makes my life easy if I make them equal. So specify the reference, which is basically the asteroid, points on the asteroid. then uh, you need to initialize the car in some position. So what I did was given the first point for the asteroid, I went from point P coordinates to point C coordinates. So if you remember, I wrote down two equations in my um, write-up. One of those equations gives you point P given C, another one gives you C given uh, P, uh, gives you C given P. And, I just wrote down two functions. That way my life is easy. I don't have to keep uh, typing those things down. So those functions are defined right down. So given point C, theta params, in this case params are the position of point P in the local frame. Then I can find coordinates of P in frame zero. And similarly, given the coordinates of P in frame zero, I can find the coordinates in of, of C. Okay, so this is just a function I wrote down and I can call it as I need. So moving on, this defines the initial position of point C. Remember that I need to integrate the equations ahead of time. So I need some way in which I initialize the ODE. So what I did is broke it down to steps. Let's just like the way I described in my notes, I get the position of point C, which in this case is, in this case, just the initial position. Get the position of point P. How do I get it? Well, I know the coordinates of C, I can get the coordinates of P by using one of those two equations, one and two. I get the error between YRF and YP and same for X. Then I used the formula for, you remember I inverted this big matrix, that matrix is A. And uh, I can find the V and omega from that. Okay, I have a question here. What's the point of the dot in params dot r? Okay, so it's a good question. So I probably sort of skipped using, uh, telling you more about params. So one way of passing variables, and I think I believe I did this in the past class, is to actually pass them as arguments. So I would pass so one place where I passed arguments is here, right params. So let's look at this function, point C to point P. Okay, I passed it as params. Now, what I could do is I could pass R. So let's say I defined, instead I defined R equals point one, 
px equals 0 0.05, py equals zero, okay? Define in that way and I pass them r, px, py, and so on. So what happens is you can see slowly this list of parameters just blows out. And one way of you know avoiding that is to use what is known as objects in MATLAB. And here, this params is an object, okay? It has, so it's an object, it has multiple variables associated with it. One of them is R, and the way you define it is params.r. That means params is a, it's actually called, it's actually a structure. So what I can do is like, if you want to ever learn anything about a function, the way I've defined it, just copy paste it in command window. Once you do that, your workspace shows you params is a struct. Okay, it's a new type of variable. It's not a matrix. If you type params here, it tells you that params is a structure with fields. One of the field is R, 0.1. Another field is 0 0.05, uh, PY is zero and so on. So this is a efficient way of packing all the variables together in one place so that when I pass this parameters to the function, which is right here, the params, uh, it's basically one variable as opposed to you know 10 or 15 things. So it's just a way of packing variables. Params is a struct that helps pass many uh, arguments. Okay, it's not the dot product. The dot product, if you want to do a dot product in MATLAB, that's basically dot A, B, if you want to do dot product A and B. So don't use, think of that as a dot product. Okay, so, okay, so just moving on. Uh, here's the error. Here's the A matrix, which basically uh, packs in that complex uh, function involving cosines P, X, P, Y. I find the velocity. In this case, U has V and omega, which are the control parameters. And from them, I can pick V, which is the first parameter. I save it because eventually I want to do a plot of V as a function of time. I also want to do a plot of omega, so I just packed it here. I just saved it at each time step. Remember that the asteroid is defined by number of points, and so I need to keep track of v and omega. And then finally, I uh, integrate. Now, in the past, I've shown you how to use Euler's integration. I wrote my own code to do Euler's integration, but MATLAB has solvers to do integration. So solver I used here was ODE4. Now, ODE4 is based on what is known as a runge kutta method okay do you do do any of you remember you probably learned runge kutta method when you did numerical methods uh, as part of your undergraduate curriculum it's basically is a way of integrating and it's it basically gives you more accurate solutions than euler's method which is based on one function evaluations runge kutta is based on four function evaluations now ode4 is sort of obsolete, it's not offered by MATLAB anymore, but they do provide it on their websites. If you want, you can download it. So if you see my uh, folder, this is the folder where I have saved all the files associated with this program. Let me open um, that folder. Okay, so in this case, I actually put ODE4 in this folder. If you don't have ODE4 in this folder, then you will not be able to run this. It will actually give you an error. That's because ODE4 is no longer offered as a standard solver in MATLAB. Okay, so be mindful of that. Keep ODE4 in the folder if you want to use it. So all you need to do for ODE4 is define the right-hand side. And what do you mean by right-hand side? We'll be using this right-hand side again and again in this course is basically the equations of motion of the car, which we derived in the previous class, forward kinematics. Essentially, the rate of change of point C, the X, Y coordinate, and the theta dot. That's all which needs to be put in here. It needs to be passed back as the rate of change, that's all. And once you do that, it'll automatically integrate this equation from start time from ti to ti plus one for the given initial condition and for a given control. What is a control? It's v and omega. Your u is this, which is v and omega. Okay, is that clear? 
So running this uh, again, and by the way, the animation part, you should, it should be straightforward given that you've already done the homework on using patch to do uh, animation, essentially using the patch command to draw the circle and then it's using the, just the plot command to draw the red line. If you want to play with this, you can play by increasing the gains. So let's make it 200. And you see that you, you see nothing. In fact, the error here shot up. It went to 10 raised to 51. So it, it was unstable. So there is this issue, which is if you increase the gains too much, then the system will go unstable. So 200 was too much. If you in, decrease that side so 100 initially, if you put 50, you run this, then it's, it looks similar, but you can see the error has shot up. So there is an optimum value at which you will get uh, low errors, but if you increase the gain too much, then you will see that it overshoots and uh, goes to infinity. Okay, any questions so far on this? Okay, there are lots of questions. I Okay, I forgot to see a, a previous question. X ref and Y ref are the desired motions. Yes, that's the desired motion. So for ideal motion, XP should be equal to X ref, yes, and YP equals Y ref, that's absolutely right. Maybe I should put it in the comments. I think it's in the comments here. Yeah, it's right here. These are coordinates of point P, X ref and Y ref. Okay, let's see what else. Can you run the program at 100 again? Okay, let me run that at 400. This is 100 for KP. So you can see that the corners actually uh, not that great. So there is some error there. Okay, any anything else? Any other questions? Can you use inverse or p inverse instead to find the inverse? Uh, inverse is so. You can use inverse, but if you use inverse, MATLAB will tell you it's not a good idea. Uh, I think the MATLAB lies, right, would want you to use the backslash. So if you want to find the inverse, so A equals rand three by three, uh, if you write inverse, that's fine. But MATLAB thinks it's not a good way because of the way it runs numerical. Uh, so it actually tells you to write inverse as, as backslash, so A, divided by I three. So it gives you the same answer as inverse, but this is numerically more stable than this one. Uh, the other question was, can you use P inverse? Uh, P inverse is technically used to find inverse of a non-square matrix. So if you do A equals rand four comma three, and then if you do inverse of A, it will complain because A is not square, but if you do P inverse, it'll actually give you an inverse. So there is a left inverse and right inverse, so P inverse does that. If it's a three by three matrix, then P inverse and inverse is the same. So I would not recommend using the inverse, instead use this command. It's called a backslash. So if you do help backslash, it'll tell you uh, what backslash does. It essentially is the same as inverse A times P. But yeah, you can use that instead of I inverted it here. I I do I wrote an analytical formula, but you don't have to write an analytical formula. You can actually use the inverse on the fly to do it. Anything anything else? What was I? I is the identity matrix. So help help I. I is the n by n identity matrix. So you can always try. You see I is three. So instead of defining 